Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 3rd of June. India's Interior Minister holds high level security meet on Jammu in Kashmir in wake of targeted attacks. Pakistan increases petrol diesel prices in effort to stabilize economy, sparking public backlash. And Taliban-led Afghanistan vows to continue mediation between Pakistan and TTP terror group. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Friday chaired a high-level meeting to take stock of the security situation in Jammu and Kashmir in the wake of a series of targeted killings of mainly non-Muslims and security personnel in the Union Territory by terrorists, scores of Kashmiri pundits employed under a Prime Minister's package in 2012 have been staging protests threatening mass exodus from the valley over the upsurge in violence. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Friday took stock of the security situation in Jammu and Kashmir during a high-level meeting in New Delhi in the wake of a series of targeted killings in the Union territory by terrorists. The meeting was attended by National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, Army Chief General Manoj Pandey and Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha, among others. More than a dozen people belonging to the region's minority Hindu community and the police have been killed by terrorists in recent days. This week alone, a Hindu teacher, bank manager and a migrant labourer were killed in separate incidents, while a local Muslim TV artist and a policeman were shot dead last month. Scores of Kashmiri pundits employed under a Prime Minister's package in 2012 have staged protests to demand transfer to their home districts and threatened mass exodus from the Kashmir Valley over the upsurge in violence. On Friday, a large number of migrant Hindu government employees were seen moving out from the Kashmir Valley. The violence has risen since last month after Kashmiri separatist leader Yasin Malik was sentenced to life imprisonment by an Indian court in a terror funding case. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday said India is growing fastest among G20 economies and today the world is also looking at its potential as he attended the groundbreaking ceremony of the third Uttar Pradesh Investors Summit in Lucknow City. PM Modi also laid foundation stone of 1,406 projects worth over Rs 8,000 crore in Uttar Pradesh state. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurated the groundbreaking ceremony of the third Uttar Pradesh Investor Summit in Lucknow City and laid the foundation stone of 1,406 projects worth over Rs 8,000 crore. The projects encompass diverse fields including agriculture, IT manufacturing, renewable energy, pharma, defense and aerospace. During the event, attended by India's top business tycoons, industrialist Gautam Adani said, his Adani group will invest Rs 70,000 crores in Uttar Pradesh state. While Kumar Mangalam Birla said that he was investing Rs 40,000 crore in various projects. PM Modi said that record investments will provide great employment opportunities. He said India is growing fastest among G20 economies and today the world is also looking at its potential and appreciating its performance. Dunya Aaj. भारत के पोटेंशियल को भी देख रही हैं और भारत के परफॉर्मेंस की भी सराहना कर रही है कोरोना काल में भी भारत रुका नहीं बल्कि अपने रिफॉर्म्स की गति को और बढ़ा दिया 
इसका परिणाम आज हम सभी देख रहे हैं The Prime Minister added that India has progressed on mantra of reform, perform and transform in the last 8 years of his government. The UP Investor Summit is being held after a 2 year covid induced hiatus. In the first edition in 2018 itself, 81 projects worth rupees 61500 crore were inaugurated. In news from Pakistan Pakistan on Thursday increased the prices of petroleum products by rupees 30 per liter and secured a determination from the power regulator for massive increase of rupees 7.91 per unit in electricity rates for the next fiscal year starting July 1. The move to raise fuel prices for a second time is an attempt to control the fiscal deficit and secure international monetary fund bailout money finance minister Mifta Ismail has said. Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail announced on Thursday that prices of all petroleum products were raised with the exception of one by another 30 rupees hours after the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority approved a massive increase of rupees 7.91 per unit in the power tariff. Speaking at a news conference, Smile said petrol and diesel prices for consumers would increase by 17% at the pump starting on Friday. The move to raise prices for the second time is an attempt to control the fiscal deficit and secure international monetary fund bailout money, he added. Last week the country raised prices by around 20%. He also announced that a tax amnesty scheme announced by former Prime Minister Imran Khan had to be withdrawn to avert financial losses. Soon after Pakistanis rushed to petrol stations before the hike in fuel prices kicked in at midnight. Drivers in the cities of Lahore and Karachi were filmed crowding petrol station and trying to fill cars, rickshaws and containers before the increase. हमारी सैलरी तनख्वाहें तो वही है पेट्रोल महंगा होता जा रहा है हम लोग मरते जाएंगे पिसते जाएंगे कारोबार की हालत ऐसी है कि पहली समझो कस्टमर है ही नहीं कहीं भी जाओ किसी भी जगह पर जाओ सैर और तफरी को तो दूर की बात है कि कहीं निकला जाए महंगाई इतनी है घर से बाहर हम जा नहीं सकते पिछले हफ्ते में बढ़ा था तीस रुपये इस हफ्ते में तीस रुपये बढ़ा है ये तो महंगाई होनी है तूफान तो आना है तो महंगाई का इसका कुछ भी हल नहीं है Pakistan and the IMF concluded negotiations last week on the resumption of the bailout program following which the lenders stressed the need to end unfounded subsidies which were costing the cash strapped country billions per month. The price hike has been the main issue between Pakistan and the IMF to reduce the fiscal deficit before the annual budget is presented later this month. More on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday warned his predecessor Imran Khan against making provocative statements after the PTI party chief predicted the division of Pakistan into three parts if the establishment did not take the right decision and hold early elections. Reports suggested the government is planning to file a treason case against Khan over the violence during his party's long march rally to Islamabad last month. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif on Thursday warned ousted Premier Imran Khan that he may do his politics but do not dare to speak about the division of Pakistan over the PTI chairman's remarks that the country will break in three parts if the establishment did not take the right decision taking to Twitter PM Sharif said that while he is signing deals with Turkey for the country's benefit Imran Khan is making naked threats to the country Khan during a TV interview this week warned that the country would descend into a civil war if elections were not announced he said he will again lead a long march towards islamabad over his demand but noted that his protest rally is dependent on the top court's decision since his ouster in a parliamentary vote in april khan has been demanding snap elections and has repeatedly accused that the united states conspired with leaders of the incumbent government to topple him Meanwhile local media reported on Friday the Pakistan government is mulling to file a treason case against Imran Khan and the chief minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa over the violence that took place during the PTI's long march rally to Islamabad on May 26. In news from Afghanistan The Islamic Emirate in Afghanistan will continue to act as a mediator between the Pakistani government and militant group TTP Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan with the aim of ensuring stability in the region. 
Afghan Taliban spokesman Inamullah Samangani said on Thursday. This comes after the TTP in a statement announced they have indefinitely extended a ceasefire with the government in Islamabad following two days of talks with a delegation of Pakistani tribal elders hosted by the Afghan Taliban. The Pakistani Taliban, known as the tehreek e taliban Pakistan, has carried out some of the bloodiest attacks inside Pakistan since 2007. It is not directly affiliated with the Afghan Taliban but pledges allegiance to them. Pakistan has also carried out a number of operations against the TTP, but it has not been able to fully stop attacks which in recent months have begun to rise again along its western border. A previous one-month truce between the two sides had expired on May 30. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has said his government is targeting 5 billion US dollars for repayments of fuel imports and other items and 1 million dollars to bolster the country's reserves amid the ongoing economic crisis. Due to an acute shortage of foreign exchange, the island nation has defaulted on the entirety of its foreign debt amounting to about $51 billion. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikrame Singhe during a meeting on Thursday said that the island nation seeks to secure around $5 billion in funding this year to cover the repayments for fuel imports and other items bought through credit lines and another $1 billion to bolster its foreign reserves. In the meeting with local chambers of commerce, Vikrame Singhe elaborated that discussions with the IMF, International Monetary Fund, are proceeding which could potentially enable the country to borrow at least $3 billion via the lender's extended fund facility. The island nation is grappling with its worst financial crisis in over seven decades with a severe foreign exchange shortage that has left it struggling to pay for essential imports including food, fuel, fertilizers and medicines. The newly appointed PM has raised taxes to shore up government revenues and plans to cut expenditure sharply in an interim budget to be presented within weeks. Sri Lanka has received two credit lines worth $1.5 billion from India for fuel and essential imports and is also asking other countries for help. India, Pakistan and Bangladesh joined other Commonwealth countries across the world on Thursday in marking Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee celebration by lighting beacons in their respective countries as she became the first British monarch to celebrate 70 years of service. A beacon was lit up on the outskirts of Indian capital New Delhi to celebrate Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee on Thursday as she becomes the first British monarch to celebrate 70 years of service. In Gurugram city, members of Queen's Commonwealth Trust Network held a small function where they lit a beacon to honour the occasion. The Queen lit the principal platinum jubilee beacon at a Windsor Castle home with hundreds of others across Britain and other Commonwealth countries. Queen Elizabeth II and her husband Prince Philip were given a grand welcome on their first visit to India in January 1961. The duo again visited the country in 1983 and 1997, the year when India celebrated 50 years of its independence. Today we are here to celebrate the power of the youth in the Commonwealth. I've been a part of a, of a number of youth uh, networks in the Commonwealth before and uh, these young leaders are doing incredible grassroots work and this today Events like today provide us a platform for all these young leaders to come together and share what they're doing, spotlight their work and also collaborate for greater impact. The Queen's Platinum Jubilee was also marked in Pakistan and Bangladesh on Thursday. Pakistan lit a beacon to celebrate the occasion in a small function at Foreign Ministry building while the lighting of the beacon was done by a youth leader of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust in Bangladesh. The Commonwealth evolved out of the British Empire and Elizabeth became its head in 1952 when she became Queen, three years after the London Declaration formally created the Voluntary Association in its current form. Now it is one of the world's biggest international organisations, made up of 54 countries, almost all of which were former colonies of the United Kingdom, covering some 2.5 billion people or about one-third of the world's population. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.